Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about a special sampling which is one of a very important concept in seismic data processing. So the contents for today's presentation I will talk about 2D Fourier transform, spatial aliasing, I will discuss some conceptual problems, then I will talk about spatial anti-alias filter and trace drop and followed by the references for the stock. <clears throat> okay, so basically 2D, 2D Fourier transform is the basis for multi-channel processes uh, that operates on several data traces simultaneously. So basically multi-channel processes are very useful for uh, uh, discriminating against noise and enhancing the signal based on dip or move out or, or some other factors. So 2D Fourier transform is a basis for both analysis and implementation of multi-channel processes. Now if we consider a seismic wave field in, in 3D as a wave front, it is basically a superposition of many dips and frequencies which is equivalent to the synthesis of many plane wave components. So each, if you consider a seismic wave field as a composition of uh, many plane wave components, each plane wave component representing a particular dip direction. So 2D Fourier transform is important for, for it is an analysis or we can say as a decomposition of a wave field into its plane wave components. I will discuss these things in detail uh, in next slides. So we have seen that a uh, 1D Fourier transform of a seismic trace is uh, is uh, in one one dimensional in, in time direction. So if we want to do the 2D Fourier transform, it basically involves two one dimensional Fourier transform. So one in time and the other one in space. So for example, if you look at this diagram here. So if you consider just 1D Fourier transform, so this is only amplitude axis and the frequency, this will give you 1D Fourier transform. Now if we decompose this in, in dips, so each linear event in FK plane represents a dip and, and if we uh, extract the amplitude spectrum for that particular dip, will give you the 2D Fourier transform. <clears throat> and, this, and like this we decompose the, the the dips in terms of their amplitude spectrum in, in an FK plane. So basically 2D Fourier transform is a decompo 2D decomposition of data in time and space. So these are the mathematical uh, formulas for uh, for uh, the, the transform. I won't go in much detail but as you know that a Fourier transform is basically representation of uh, the data in terms of sine and sine or cosine uh, waveforms, sinusoids or okay so this is uh, like we have seen uh, in the previous uh, 3D diagram so this is the 2D representation of uh, the FK spectrum so these amplitudes are basically the third axis the amplitude versus uh, frequency and each event each line in this uh, FK spectrum represents uh, represents a particular dip in the event. For example, as you can see, these are some direct arrival events, so which corresponds to this event here. So, like this, the other events are mapped. Now you can see some some of the energy on the on the negative side. So this is the wave number. Uh, I, I will discuss these in detail. What this wave number means and other other terms in the next slides. So you can see that uh, the, some of these uh, steeply dipping events look very aliased. That's how the, the data look aliased in, in a spatial domain. So I will explain that as well in the next slides. So this aliased energy uh, is mapped on this side instead of being mapped on this side here. It's mapped, it's wrapped here. So, so I, will, I will discuss this concept in, in detail in the next slide. So, like I said before, a seismic wave field is, uh, is, is uh, if you consider the plane wave components from the seismic field, is a function of time and space both. So the Fourier transform of the space variable is, is called, is defined as the spatial frequency, which is 
the number of cycles per unit distance or the wave number. What it means is, so if you consider a sinusoid in time, so this is temporal sampling which we discussed in the previous lecture. So if you consider this seismic uh, a sinusoid, a sinusoid here, if you have two samples for like one period, now a period uh, of a sinusoid is defined as the time between two consecutive peaks or from this point to this point. So this is one period. So one, if you have two samples per period, which is uh, the requirement for the Nyquist uh, frequency. So if you have two samples for this period, if you define the period as T, is given by 2 delta T and the Nyquist frequency is given by F Nyquist equals 1 over 2 delta T. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so uh, we need at least two samples per period. So this is defined as the Nyquist frequency and uh, if you have frequencies higher than Nyquist in your data, they appear as lower frequencies. That is called temporal aliasing. So anything above uh, the, the Nyquist frequency, we basically apply an anti-alias filter uh, to remove those high frequencies and then we resample the data to avoid temporal aliasing. Like in the spatial sampling, so in a spatial sampling, like uh, I said, multi-channel processes, you have several traces uh, and uh, the, the space between the traces is defined as delta x, which is called sampling interval. So now in this space, if you consider this uh, sinusoid, so we call it as uh, uh, the period, instead of calling it as period in time, in a space we call it as lambda. <coughs> So now if you have, let's say we have two samples per wavelength, so lambda will be given as one over, uh, will be given as two times delta x. And uh, like the Nyquist frequency, the wave number, we define wave number, like frequency, the corresponding term in, in spatial sampling is wave number. So wave number is defined as one over lambda. So for the Nyquist wave number we define we define it as k Nyquist equals one over two delta x. So what happens is if you have higher uh, anything uh, greater or smaller than k Nyquist, uh, your data will appear as aliased. So what aliasing means will be discussed in the in the next few slides. So. The most important point from this slide is the, the Nyquist frequency is given as F Nyquist equals 1 over 2 delta T, <coughs> excuse me, and the Nyquist wave number is given as 1 over 2 delta X. Delta X is the sampling interval in space. Okay, so in this slide, I'm going to show you some important, uh, uh, important relations uh, used in, in the 2D Fourier transform concept. So let's assume that this is a short gather and we just pick one of the event and that's how it's mapped in, in the FK spectrum. So assuming this as positive dip means uh, that the, the, the distance is increasing with time. So we, it's mapped on the positive sides of the, of the wave number and if the event is negatively dipping, which means the offset is uh, increasing with decreasing time. So that's, we call it as negative dip. So it's mapped in this side of the, the FK spectrum. So basically, if you have, uh, if you have uh, a linear event, uh, if you, let's say if you have a mono frequency linear event, that, which means it's like you have only one frequency for all these uh, events mapped linearly, they will be mapped as a single point on this FK spectrum. If it's a mono frequency event, let's say this linear event have all the frequencies, uh, so all the frequency components in, in this uh, linear event. So these uh, uh, linear events for this particular dip will be mapped along this straight line. <clears throat> okay, so this is very important. So this is a way to, to to decompose the data in FK spectrum and, and that's how uh, the, the events are mapped. So the mapping is discussed in the next slides. So the most important thing I want to talk about is these relationships which are very important. 
so so this event uh, we need to define the apparent velocity okay. the apparent velocity of this event will be given as delta x over delta t so which is a normal uh, velocity distance time relationship so this is the apparent velocity of the event it's very important is not the actual velocity or the geological velocity of the event this is the apparent velocity of this particular event it has nothing to do with the geological velocity or or the actual velocity so this is the apparent velocity of the this event so it's given as delta x over delta t so the next relationship is called the slowness if we take the inverse of this or the reciprocal of this v apparent uh, it's given as v p equals 1 over v apparent so it's given as delta t over delta x so this is the slowness so this slowness concept will come in later uh, during tau p transform so this slowness is given as 1 over v apparent this slowness is basically uh, corresponds to the dip the dip of this event dip is the angle uh, if you could draw a horizontal line like that and if you measure this angle this is known as uh, the dip of this event so dip is given is equivalent to basically slowness is 10 theta equals delta t over delta x and theta will be given as 10 inverse of delta t over delta x so so this is the the dip of this uh, this event here and this is how it's defined uh, this concept will be covered in the next topic in the next slide sorry and uh, we have seen that uh, the wave number uh, uh, Nyquist wave number is given as 1 over 2 delta x and the Nyquist frequency is given as 1 over 2 delta t now if you substitute these values for delta x and delta t in the v apparent uh, formula here you will get this relationship v apparent equals f over k so for particular so this relationship is very important in uh, defining the aliasing uh, concept which we will discuss again in the next few slides so let's say if you are given a uh, particular delta x uh, sampling interval and you know the apparent velocity of the event then you will be asked uh, to find out the frequency at which the event will appear earliest so you, so we will cover that in the in the in the problem section okay so in this slide <clears throat> so this is uh, to explain uh, the mapping of the events, how they are mapped in the FK spectrum. So here you can see that uh, there is a horizontal event which corresponds to zero dip, and and if you uh, the angle is increasing with the horizon, that means the dip is increasing with the horizon. So these are increasing in dip, and this is uh, uh, the negative dip. So it will be mapped in the negative direction. So the horizontal event here is mapped along this line here k0 where the wave number is 0 so any horizontal energy will be mapped along k equals 0 axis okay and as you increase the dip uh, they are mapped like that and any vertical event so it will be mapped as horizontal depends what frequency it is uh, it will again map horizontal and the negatively dipping event here will be mapped in the negative direction so each straight line in this fk spectrum represents a dip which corresponds to the angle of the the event uh, it makes with the horizontal so which i have explained in the previous slide okay now let's say you have uh, these uh, linearly dipping uh, positively dipping events they are parallel to each other basically corresponds to the same dip so all these events will be mapped here so if you have let's say if you have only one event it will be mapped here if you have these several events will be mapped here so what is the difference if uh, you have multiple events like linearly dipping events like that so the main difference will be in terms of the amplitude you can like the third axis so you will see a different amplitude if you have several events uh, dipping the same okay so this is again for the negatively dipping event so it's mapped here in the negative negative dip direction <clears throat> now in in reality we have a, a, a hyperbolic or parabolic shape of the the primary energy in a short gather 
so again the concept is the same you just need to break it down into linear events so draw a tangent at each of these points and uh, so the maximum dip will be corresponding to this and the minimum dip will be corresponding to the event uh, to the tangent here so they are basically mapped uh, between these two lines so all the energy is mapped between these two lines so now uh, one one question here uh, if you apply the nmo correction so nmo correction basically a velocity move out correction so when you apply the nmo correction these all events become this event becomes flat so where uh, this event will be mapped after applying the nmo correction so like we have seen in the previous slide a uh, horizontal event will be mapped along k0 so when you apply the nmo correction on this event it will be mapped along the k0 axis so this is very important uh, sometimes uh, uh, to save the primary energy uh, uh, because uh, uh, like uh, the the primaries and the multiples have different move out and when you apply the nmo correction based on the primary energy your primary energy gets flat and your multiples remains uh, sh they they keep on showing the move out. So uh, when you apply the NMO correction, your multiple well, your primary energy is flat and multiples is still showing move out. So your primary energy will be mapped along K zero, and multiples will still be mapped along this x along these uh, uh, linear straight events in the FK spectrum. So the concept will be covered later as well in detail. <clears throat> so what is the spatial aliasing? So like I have mentioned a few times now, the concept of a spatial aliasing. So what happens with the spatial aliasing is like, like in in temporal uh, aliasing, in temporal sampling, you need at least two samples per period to recover the waveform. Otherwise, your higher frequencies will appear as uh, uh, alias, then they will appear as lower uh, in your data. So similar concept in spatial aliasing. Uh, so this. The, if you have uh, if you don't have at least two samples per wavelength then the this inability uh, will result in a spatial aliasing which means your your dips will appear different in your data than their true true dip so this this inability is called the, the spatial aliasing so higher higher the the dip of the event more is the possibility of uh, aliasing or according to the relation we have seen v apparent equals f over k higher the dip of the event lower is the frequency where the spatial aliasing occurs what it means will be will be explained so why it is important to 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 take care of uh, spatial aliasing issues so because loss of processes in in seismic data processing involves fk FK filtering and uh, and uh, um, in migration uh, you need to have uh, the correct tips of the data otherwise uh, for example in migration uh, migra they are migrated to different uh, direction and this will result in uh, degrading your your migrated section so how how spatial aliasing uh, can be avoided so so far uh, uh, the best option is to to apply to to interpolate the traces and reduce your uh, delta x your spatial sampling and uh, then you will be able to to avoid spatial aliasing so to explain this concept if you consider this example uh, which says in a short gather trace spacing is 12 and a half meters an event has an apparent velocity of 1500 meter per second the question A is at what frequency will aliasing occurs and question B is the data is sampled at 4 millisecond if the trace spacing is reduced to 6.25 meters what will be the frequency of uh, what will be the alias frequency so now you, ha you are given delta x is 12.5 so first thing you calculate uh, the k Nyquist which is the Nyquist wave number which is given as 1 over 2 delta x so it will be 1 over 2 times 12.5 it will give you 0 0.04 cycles per meter so 
remember this is in meters so this is in meter if you convert that in kilometers it's 40 cycles per kilometer now you know that v apparent equals f over k so 1500 equals f over k nyquist which is 0 0.04 again this is just for the representing in uh, the cycles per unit per kilometer is just to represent in the wave number uh, in the in this fk spectrum uh, otherwise we just substitute 0 0.04 cycles per meter so this will give you 60 hertz so anything above 60 hertz will be aliased and appear as negative tips here so we have seen that this the frequency the v is the frequency is dependent on v apparent and k naquist k naquist is dependent on delta x so spatial sampling so the the, the frequency at which uh, the aliasing spatial aliasing occurs is dependent on the apparent velocity of the the event or also we can call it as the tip of the event and the the sampling interval delta x so therefore your 1500 meter per second event will be aliased at 60 hertz so 60 hertz it means above 60 hertz it will appear as negative tips here now uh, in temporal sampling you are given as delta t equals 4 millisecond your Nyquist frequency will be 1 over 2 delta t is 125 hertz so that's how we have shown here from 0 to 125 hertz we can show up to whatever but because this is sampled to 4 milliseconds so we show it up to we are only interested up to 125 hertz now if you reduce your sampling from 12 and a half to 6.25 meters your k nyquist will be 1 over 2 delta x is is doubled it's 80 cycles per kilometer so your if you substitute on this formula v apparent equals f over k uh, it will give you 120 hertz which is quite high frequency so by interpolating we just uh, assure to avoid this uh, aliasing issue over here at 60 hertz so your 1500 meter per second event will be aliased at 120 hertz okay so this is another example i will uh, leave you to to go through that on your own and this is another example to show to explain the concept is similar problem so you can go through that on your own the most important thing is this relationship v apparent equals f over k and the important thing is to understand how this is derived okay let's consider some of the examples from the book elmas so these are all the examples explained in elmas so these are the the, the gathers the mono frequency gathers with increasing dip from 0 to 15 so as we go from 1 to 6 the the dip is increased from 0 millisecond per trace to 15 millisecond per trace this is another unit for for sh representing the dip of the event okay so your horizontal events as we have seen so these are all mono frequency events so these will be mapped as a point on on the fk space so each gather has got their fk space shown uh, in the bottom at the bottom so your horizontal energy will be mapped as uh, at k0 and as the tip increases this uh, this is mapped further away from k0 in the positive direction so as the tip increases this energy, this event is mapped further away from k0 axis so this is a 12 hertz sinusoid no problem this is a 24 hertz sinusoid so you see that uh, it's a bit higher frequency compared to the previous one again uh, it's not a problem uh, for delta x so uh, for 24 hertz uh, it's still not aliased and again they are the horizontal even mapped at k0 and as you, the dip increases they are mapped further away if you further increase uh, to 36 hertz uh so this is okay this event is okay now here you see that instead of looking positive dip, they look negative tips so this the, the higher dips will start to show 
aliasing and you see that it's, it's mapped in the negative side. So everything else is mapped in the positive side, but this event is mapped in the negative side. So as if you as you go further to 48 hertz sinusoids, uh, the the aliasing will start to appear uh, for less dipping events as well. So this event is mapped as negative dip here, and this one is negative as well. So these remember these are all mono frequency events, and they are supposed to be mapped at at one particular point in FK space. Again, uh, as you go higher frequencies, they all uh, the, the 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 less steeper events or the less dip events will have, will be aliased as well. As you go further, again you see the aliasing. Now, if we combine all these events, so let's say this has got all the the 12, 24, 36, 48 and 72 hertz, 60 and 72 hertz events all in one, all in this gather here. So this these gather has got all these six frequency events. So you, can, you see that they are mapped along K0 and as the dip increases they are mapped like that. That's okay and for this dip you start to see the aliased energy here. So and as as the dip increases further, this aliased uh, 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 they are more it's the energy frequencies are aliased more and likewise here. <clears throat> now uh, in this example, uh, we see that that we have three gathers with different traces spacing 12 and a half, 25 and 50 meters, and the same uh dipping event so we see that uh, the the event appears uh, aliased here with the higher trace spacing now according to the formula v apparent equals f over k k is dependent on delta x and the apparent velocity of this so the frequency of aliasing is dependent on the the apparent velocity of the event and the and the delta x the spatial sampling of the event so so in this example we have the same apparent velocity but different uh, trace spacing. So higher is the trace spacing, lower is the frequency at which the aliasing occurs. So for this event, for uh, 12 and a half meter trace spacing, this is fine, it's mapped as a linear event and no uh, energy is aliased. As you increase the trace spacing, you see that uh, the aliased frequency reduces. So this energy above some particular frequencies appear saliest and it's mapped here and if you further increase uh, the delta x uh, this is further alias in fact you see double aliasing with 50 meter trace spacing okay this is another example to show now you have the same spacing but different app apparent velocity so this apparent velocity uh, apparent velocity is basically uh, uh, the opposite of uh, the, the the slowness is one over apparent velocity or the dip is uh, one over apparent velocity. So this event has smaller dip compared to this event. So this event will appear uh, aliased uh, when you map in the FK domain. This less less dip, it's fine. Higher the dip, lower is the frequency. It will be aliased. Okay, now as I have shown before that multiple events will be mapped along this line. So if you have, it's the same like that, the amplitudes will, so here you have one event and you have multiple events with the same dip. So again, the, the, they will be mapped along this straight line for this uh, dip and they will be aliased along this straight line here. The amplitudes will be different because you have many uh, linear events here. <clears throat> uh, it's just another example to show how the events are mapped. Just remember the basic principle I have explained before. Okay, so that was all about uh, the 2D Fourier transform and, uh, and spatial aliasing. Now I'm going to talk about the topic uh, called the spatial anti-alias filter and trace drop. <clears throat> like in temporal sampling so when we want to te do temporal sampling like for example we want to resample the data from 2 millisecond 
to 4 milliseconds, we need to apply an, a temporal anti-alias filter to remove all the higher frequencies and then we do the sampling. So same as in, uh, in, uh, in spatial uh, domain, we need to apply an anti-alias, uh, spatial anti-alias filter to remove uh, uh, the wave numbers that are higher than the Nyquist wave number and then we apply uh, the spatial sampling. So, for example, if you want to resample your data from, from 12 and a half meters to 25 meters, like you increase the spatial sampling. This is we do because so normally the data is acquired on a 12 and a half meter interval. That's the normal shot gathered, the receiver spacing is 12 and a half meters. And we need uh, <clears throat> 12 and a half meters trace spacing to carry out several processes in pre-processing. But uh, uh, later on, uh, we need to, to drop the traces because dropping the traces does not affect uh, uh, the, the CMP fold, the common midpoint fold. Again, if you don't understand uh, this, this thing here, uh, this I will cover uh, when we reach up to this level. <clears throat> in uh, multiple attenuation. So, uh, dropping, like I said, dropping the traces won't affect your uh, CMP fold, the common midpoint gather fold. So, and normally uh, the pre-processing is done on uh, a much denser grid. And then the regularization and migration is done on uh, less denser grid to, to save the compute and to save the cost of running these because the 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 sub surface illumination is not affected uh, if we if we drop the trace uh, maybe i'm going too far but let's discuss this special anti-alias filter and trace drop so basically we want to drop the traces we want to reduce the sampling uh, we want to increase the the sampling so to to go from 12 and a half meters to 25 meters we need to apply a, and a special anti-alias filter, which means we need to remove the, 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 anything above the Nyquist wave number from the data. So there is a special uh, process, the way we apply the special anti-alias filter. So we basically apply the NMO correction uh, to the shot gathers, and then we do the Fourier transform. So applying NMO correction will help uh, in moving your uh, primary energy close to K0. And then, uh, then we apply the 2D Fourier transform and apply this special anti-alias filter. We remove uh, anything uh, above the half uh, wave number. And then we do the inverse Fourier transform and then we drop the traces. So this is to, to remove uh, the aliased uh, energy already in the data, especially aliased energy in the data, and then we drop the traces to avoid spatial aliasing issues. I will explain that, uh, what it means. So this is the process, uh, you see that, uh, so this, this is an example from, uh, from uh, Ilmas. Uh, the gathers doesn't look great, but you can see that some of the gathers have got animal correction applied and then uh, we remove the animal correction. So you, you can read the text. So here you, you see that you're uh, after applying uh, animal correction, most of the energy is mapped at K0. And then we remove, uh, remove the energy above uh, the half uh, the K Nyquist. So this remove energy is muted, of course, with some uh, taper here. And then we remove the animal correction, and then we drop the traces. So that's that's the process we normally apply. It's not a great example shown here, but uh, that's the best I can show to explain. Okay, now this this is a clear cut example from Ilmaz. So you can see that on these gathers, so there is a trace drop performed on each of them. So on this one. You can see that there is some aliased energy above 72 hertz or 75 hertz. So this is represented in the other way around. So this is frequency is increasing here in the downward direction. So, so you can see that there is some of the aliased energy. So if we do the trace drop without without removing this aliased energy first, this energy will further be aliased and your 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 FK spectrum will look worse. So, and if we 
to the, the process I have shown in the previous slide. So we uh, remove the LES energy first. So if we remove this LES, LES energy first and then apply the trace drop, uh, you can see that there is no uh, energy appearing LES. So this is a very good example to, to show, to explain why we need to apply in a special anti-LES filter before trace dropping. Okay, that's all for, uh, for the talk. I hope you will uh, you will uh, you enjoyed. Uh, uh, I have explained enough to to start understanding the concept of two D Fourier transform, special aliasing, and special anti alias filter. So these are the two books I have used as a reference: uh, Elmas and an Introduction to Experts in Geophysics. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to to uh, to to drop me an email or. You can uh, specify in the comment box. Okay, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, good luck. Bye-bye.